I mean, you have to try hard. Try really, really, really hard. Like, go above and beyond and out of your way, reaching the heights of your potential to be able to suck this bad. Like, this is not by accident. This is like unintentional, fully intentional. You look at SmackDown, and in the course of just a couple of weeks, you've got Vince McMahon taking a show that when it debuts on Fox, it hits 3.8 plus million viewers, a really solid premiere edition rating. That's a decent viewership number on a Friday night for professional wrestling nowadays. That's a really good number. 3.888 million viewers. And yet here we are, two weeks later, and you are down to 2.4 million viewers. You have lost 1.4 million viewers in two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. And sure, it was to be expected a little bit that you were throwing so much at that first show that the ratings were going to level off quite a bit, at least somewhat. You're going to hopefully maybe hover around 2.8 to 3.1 million viewers, depending on what you happen to do in a given week. But there shouldn't be that precipitous of a drop in your overall viewership numbers in two damn weeks! And yet, here we sit. And for most of the people that watch SmackDown this week, I have to believe that they can understand why, in the course of two weeks, this company has turned off almost a million and a half viewers. It's not very hard to see at all. It just isn't. You're opening the show with Roman Reigns versus Shinsuke Nakamura because that type of match is going to get the fucking ratings bumping, right? So that way you can have Baron Corbin, the fucking dude that you've thrown, the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal at, the fucking Money in the Bank briefcase at, the fucking King of the Ring at, and he still sucks. It's lame as shit. Just because you put all these props and all these labels and all these titles behind him doesn't mean that he can dry off flies to shit. But then we're going to saddle Roman Reigns with freaking Baron Corbin. Yes, let's have him bash Reigns over the head with the freaking scepter. And, ah! Like, this is how you're going to open the show. Like, somebody thought that Taxi Sam being involved in any way, shape, or form was a good idea! You look at a shit show like this, and it is easy to see, and totally, totally easy to believe that Vince would be having his creative people working until three in the goddamn morning just to then take the script and tear it up and write this piece of crap again. Like, this is, this is not opinion at this point. The numbers clearly indicate the shows that you write, Vince, absolutely suck! You can fire Eric Bischoff all the hell you want. You think freaking brother love, Vince, I love you! You guys going to make a damn bit of difference? No! The WWE now, it's like the Oakland Raiders were about a decade ago. And this feels incredibly inappropriate, I'm sure, to some of you to say, but it is totally the reality. The only chance this company has to survive and try to maybe once again one day thrive is the day that Vince is either so incapacitated that the board has to remove him from his position of power or he drops dead. Like, that's what it's coming down to. Because he gets closer and closer to his grave at his advancing years and he's bringing his baby along with it. Like, this was terrible. You look at the Shorty Gable stuff. Oh, it is not Shorty Gable now. It's flipping Shorty G. And then you got these idiots out there talking about, well, you look what they did with Kurt Angle. 
They didn't call him right angle. They didn't call him 90 degree angle. He didn't call himself adequate angle, did he? He didn't call himself knee slapping curve or none of that shit. The guy is a freaking former Olympian. Why do you go out of your way to saddle people with the most ridiculous fucking gimmicks possible? Again, I want to repeat and emphasize. The dude, yes, he's maybe, what, 5'8 or so. But in today's wrestling business, that's at least average height, if not a little bit higher, it feels like. And you're going to you talk about this like his height is some type of hindrance to him or some type of barrier or some type of obstacle? The dude wrestled in the freaking Olympics! Means he had to be good at wrestling at some point in time, didn't he? Now, personally, I think freaking Chad Gable's overrated as shit. Because when I ask people what's so special about him, Oh, he, he's great in the ring. Lots of dudes can do lots of spots and lots of moves, and I don't mean a damn thing. That's part of the problem. Everybody can do the same crap. Nobody stands out. Nobody's unique. And now all of a sudden, you're expecting people to believe because your sheepishness with Vince, your freaking bias with WWE has blinded you so much that a guy that couldn't write a good show to save his freaking ass is going to do big and wonderful things with Shorty freaking G. Now, if he came out and he was rapping, talking about how he was going to give everyone in WWE the game, then maybe we'll have a different discussion. But we're not going to. The promo after his match was shit. Is everything about this is shit? If you're going to have these people... Try to make them something. If you're not going to try and make them something, why do this? And this is just not good business. When you talk about good creative and good professional wrestling writing and booking and storytelling, you should be accentuating the positives and hiding the negatives. Instead, Vince and his warped and twisted mind trolling everybody, instead, chooses to accentuate the biggest negative and minimize any positives the guy has. For those that are pissed off about this, they should be pissed off because this is just childish, petty-level Vince type of shit. And then we get Hulk Hogan coming to us via skype -alite. That's what I'm going to call it, skype -alite. And Oh, let me tell you something, brother. Oh, the first thing you're going to realize, brother. I'm a brother, 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 brother. And of course, using him all like so many other things, to build up to that crown jewel show in Saudi Arabia. Because just like the U.S. government, the WWE bends over and takes it up the rear for the Saudis' blood oil money. Because, of course, they do. And then, of course, we get the eight-man tag, and people can sit there and talk about, ooh, did you see the do the thing when the guy from Heavy Machinery brought up Kofi losing the title and he smashed the pancake? Nope. Done with the fucking character. Don't care. He'll turn. Who gives a crap? You already lost your belt last week. You clearly didn't care. Don't be trying to sit there and make up for it now. So this eight-man tag, only thing I care about with it is... <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler! The only good thing about that match is I get to say that. Next, Miz TV. It's Sasha Banks. It's Bailey. Two incredible whack-ass promos. Both of them stink on the mic. Like, please understand, gentlemen, that pretending they are good on the mic in no way, shape, or form indicates that they are going to be any more likely to sleep with you if you ever happen to run into them at a fucking international house of pancakes, okay? Not even at a Waffle House if they're feeling really grimy and low down dirty on that given night. The most notable thing about this was when they're trying to go at Miz, Miz coming back and basically pooning the both of them. Like this, this was a featured segment. Anytime you put Bailey in front of a live microphone, it, it's pretty cringe. Sasha every once in a while can pull an adequate promo out of her ass cheeks, but this wasn't one of them. 
She sounded bush league. She sounded amateur. And even when Nikki Cross comes out, like I'm getting the flashbacks of, oh, you talking about women's revolution, you know, this this just feels like old crappy diva stuff from five or six years ago. Leading to the six-pack challenge where whoop de skip wouldn't you know, Nikki Cross is the new number one contender. Woo! You got a match where Braun Strowman didn't want to sit through Drew Gulak's 300-something slide PowerPoint presentation. Just basically put him out there to remind people who Braun Strowman is, squash the dude, make him look big and bad for his upcoming fight at Crown Jewel against Tyson Fury, because again, that's what matters the most to this company, is fucking Crown Jewel, not anything else. Then you get to the main event. Oh, Roman Reigns, brother, is going to be the captain of Team Hogan, brother. What you going to do, brother, when Roman Reigns, brother? Ah, oh, I can just look at this. Like the main event. It ties into what happened early in the night. Big skipty skip, whoopty what the fuck are you? It's Daniel Bryan, it's Roman Reigns versus Baron Corbin and who was it, Shinsuke? Who gives a fuck? Like you you look at this show. And you look at the way it ends. Of course you gotta have the baby faces standing tall. Like, there was nothing about this show that hooked you. There's nothing about this show that builds on to the next week that you're like, ooh, I really got to see. There's no element of cliffhanger like, oh, my God, I don't know where they're going to go next. There's just nothing. New network, same old shit. Hence why they've lost 1.4 plus million viewers in two goddamn weeks. Like, what was good about this week's show? I mean, you could just sit there on a Friday night, and you're like, the best thing about this is that it's only two hours. And if this was raw, you'd still have another hour to go. Which is why, as much as anything else, I have chosen to switch over to watching and reviewing SmackDown on Friday nights because, hey, it's at the end of the week. And worst case scenario... Not only does it not conflict with Monday Night Football, it's only two hours, so if it's a shit show just like Raw is, at least I can be done and over with it for the night at 10 o'clock. Like, who came out of this show better? Nobody. Who felt like a bigger deal coming out of this show? Nobody. Name one interesting angle that came out of this show, or was built or developed on this show. Yeah, I can't. Because I wasn't one, Vince! I mean this. This company is not going to have a chance in hell until either Vince is stripped of his powers or he falls over and dies. And it has gotten to that point. Like, you really think Fox is happy right now? And you can say, well, look at the performance in the 18 to 49 demographic. And again, wrestling always gets a shittier ratio when it comes to advertising dollars based off of performance in the deck demo. So if you look at some of the other shows on Friday night, they might have slightly higher viewership numbers, but slightly less in terms of the 18 to 49 demo. Well, you know, when you're talking about WWE and wrestling versus these other shows, the WWE's probably got to do 1.3 to 1.5 times the amount in that demo for in order for it to come out as equivalent to Fox. And the WWE, of course, isn't going to do that right. Like, this is just bad. I can't imagine sitting there and writing this show and thinking this is any fucking good at all. Like, if you're a match mark, there weren't great matches on this show. If you're a character mark, you didn't see great characters on this show. If you're about pageantry and presentation, you didn't get that on this show. If you're a mark for stories and storylines and story development, you didn't get that on this show. Like, there literally was nothing for everyone! That should be WWE's new theme. Instead of when wrestling's at its best, you've got something for everyone. You've got nothing for everyone. But at least you got me, Oterra Central. Not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. And I can at least say for SmackDown, kind of lives up to that building of not the wrestling show that any of us want. This was bad.